Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at the derivatives market specifically as an asset class. This topic is covered in essentials of investments or principles of investment course whether it's a graduate or undergraduate. As always I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance as well as Excel tutorials. If you like my lectures please like them, share them, put them in playlist. If they benefit you it means they might benefit other people. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to supplement your finance or accounting education, especially if you are studying for your CPA or CFA exam. So the first thing I would like to uh, talk about is the different asset classes because the derivatives were going to be considering it as a different asset class. In the prior session, we looked at the fixed income as, a, as an asset class the equity and today we'll look at derivatives and under fixed income we broke it down into money market and capital market and we talked about this topic this topic and today we're going to talk about this derivatives so if you'd like to learn about equity or fixed income whether it's money market short term or capital market please look at the prior sessions let's look at the derivatives market what is a derivative a derivative a derivative is a security with a payoff that depends on the price of another security now this all sounds complicated let me give you a simple example maybe you could relate to let's assume next semester you need to take a course called intermediate accounting now don't take this course unless you have to if you're a finance student you don't need it okay <laughs> because it's a tough course but let's assume you are accounting and finance major and you need to take this course next semester today the book you can purchase this book for 150 dollars so the price of the book today is 150 but you don't need the book now if you buy the book today you don't need it until three months from now but here's the thing you're gonna be waiting until three months later where you're gonna have to buy the book but you don't know what's gonna happen to the price the price could go up of this textbook the price could go down since you want to buy it what is your risk the risk is the price could go up okay that, that's your risk if the, if the price goes down that's not a risk to you so what can you do to hedge that risk or to deal with that risk here's what you do let's assume you find another student let's assume you find another student or some counterparty another person and that other person tell you look you pay me twenty dollars today pay today and I will sell you this book I will guarantee it for one hundred and forty dollars but you have to pay me twenty dollars today now let's think about it you pay twenty dollars today then you can buy the book for 140 so simply you end up paying for the book in total 160 but you know this is how much you are paying so what happened this 20 dollars that you pay to the other student or to the counterparty that's basically your premium there is a cost because this individual the other individual the other individuals what they did is they gave you the right to buy it at 140 but simply put you're going to end up paying 160 in total but that's it you have that you have that option now you you can sleep well that you know you can buy this book for 160 okay now let's assume this textbook there is a shortage of this textbook when next semester came and the book went up to 180 or went up to 200 dollars here's what happened for one thing you can buy the book you can buy the book for 160 turn around and sell it for 180 or turn around and sell it for 200 but here's what happened too this option here your $20 is an option your $20 if you're if the textbook goes up in value this option goes up in value so let's assume you you, you change your major said so you know what I'm, I don't want I don't want this option anymore because I'm gonna go finance and econ don't do that but yes let's assume you want to go finance and econ not finance and accounting what you do is you will sell this option so if the price of the book goes up your option is worth more so if the price of the book a month later is 180 you may ask 30 dollars for your option so your option is worth more and conversely if the price of the textbook drops to 100 dollars because there's a new edition guess what your option becomes worthless if you try to sell it to someone tell them i'll give you the option to buy it for 140 they would say are you crazy I can buy it for $100 why would I buy it for 140 and pay $20 today to buy it for 140 so the option value this $20 depends on the value of the price of your intermediate accounting so I hope you kind of get an idea about this uh, 
uh, what is security that pay off a, deriv a derivative security. So in the real world, we're not dealing with textbook. We're dealing. We're going to be dealing with stocks, bonds, interest rate, commodities. So what we have is we have derivatives that are called futures and options, and related derivatives contract provide a payoff that depend on the value of other variables. But rather than using the textbook, now we're we're looking at commodities. You want to buy wheat, corn, coffee. You want to buy bonds and stocks. You have derivatives. You want to buy, you want to hedge your interest. You might have interest, you might have payment to the bank, or you might want to borrow a loan. You want to hedge your interest rate, or you want to buy indexes. We talked about the indices in the prior session. You want to buy the Dow, you want to buy the S&P 500, you want to buy the NASDAQ. So you want to hedge that position. So let's first take a look at options. We have two type of options. We have call options and we have put options, but we're going to take one at a time. Then we'll look at an example. What is a call option? The call option gives it's holder the right now it's very important to understand the right not obligation and you're going to see why i am emphasizing this the right means i have the right to do something but i don't have to do it if i want to do it i can do it simply put sometime when a student skip so many classes i have the right to drop them i don't have to drop them but if i want to drop them i can so this is what the right is to purchase an asset for a specified price called the exercise or strike price on or before a specified expiration date. So simply put, I have the right to buy Apple. I have the right to buy Microsoft at a certain price within a specific time period. Okay, that gives me the right to buy. So call option, I have the right to buy. And we'll work an example in a minute. Put option, on the other hand, it's the exact opposite. Now let's go back to the call option. The call, Who would buy the call option? Remember the textbook, the intermediate accounting textbook? The person that thinks the price is going to go up will buy the call option because this person, they want to buy the textbook, okay? And because they, they are going to take that course in the future, they need the textbook. Therefore, they want to buy a call option to make sure the price that they buy is fixed at a certain amount. Now, put option is the exact opposite. It gives the other party the right to sell an asset at a specified price. So let's assume you are taking intermediate accounting now. So you are taking intermediate accounting now and you have the textbook. But you need the textbook until the semester ends. Once the semester ends, you want to sell it. Now today, if you want to sell the textbook, is for 150 if you want to sell it today. But you cannot sell it today because you need it for your class. You're going to have to sell it three months from now. You don't know what's going to happen three months from now. What's your risk? Your risk, if you're selling it, that the price could go down to 100 and you would lose $50. That's your risk. If the price goes up to 200, you're happy. You would sell it for 200. That's not your risk. You risk that the price will drop. Here's what you do. You'll try to find another student that's going to be taking this course and you'll tell them, look, um, would you like to buy my book? I will sell you the option. Uh, uh, the right to sell, I'll give you the right to buy my book at a certain price. Okay, so what happened is you will tell them, for example, you would agree with them for 140. Now, what's going to happen is whatever happened in the future, you can sell your book for 140. Okay, this is what the, the put option, the right to sell an asset. You have the asset, which is the textbook, and you have the right to sell it for 140. Now, you don't care that the other person is thinking the price could go up. That's why they want to buy it for 140. So you're both happy, not both happy. You both protected yourself. OK, so back, back to the textbook example. But let's take a look at an actual example for an actual stock. So we are dealing now with Apple stock. And this is April 18, 2017. <laughs> the price of Apple on that day was 141.20. Forget it. Now it's 350 or 360 trading at this moment. So here's what happened. Here are how we read how we read the how we read options. So it's very important to know how to read options. Options are sold in 100 option increments. So when you buy an option, you buy 100 options, right? To buy 100. So we're going to be specifically looking for to, to illustrate this example the June 17th expiration with the strike price of 170. I'm sorry, 140, not 170. So this is the option we're gonna be looking at. What does that mean? We are standing, we are standing today is April 18, 2017. And here's what happened. We have an option on June 16th with a strike price of 140. What does it mean a strike price? Well, if you want to buy Apple for 140 on June 16th, which is, uh, uh, which is two months from now. You can buy it for 140. Two months from now. Two months from now. Well, 
hold on a second. Why would I want to buy it for less than what it is today, which is 141? The reason why, because you might think, you might think the price is going to go up. That's why. You just, you know what? I want to buy Apple, but I'm not ready. So what I would do, I will buy the option, the call option. So this is the call option. Remember the call option, the right to buy. The call option is priced at $4.80. Remember, each option is is 100 shares. Therefore, if you pay today, here, here's what we're talking about here. You pay today $480. This is what you have to pay to the other party. If you pay $480, what's going to happen is they will guarantee Apple stock for $140. Okay, why would you do so? Because you think Apple stock is going to go up to 160. And therefore, you can buy it for 140, but you have to pay a premium. That's you. The other person that's selling you the option thinks the Apple stock is going to go down to 120. He will buy it for 120 and give it to you for 140 and sell it to you for 140. So there's always two part to it, but you have to pay. So simply put, if I ask you, what is your total cost? If you do, if you do exercise this option, your total cost for Apple is 144.80. This is how much you are buying Apple stock for because you're paying 480 now of the price. And if you decide to buy it, you have to pay 140. Now you don't have to buy it. So the maximum you would lose really is $480. So you pay 480 now, and this is the maximum you would lose for the right to buy it for 140. If the price goes up to $2,000 per share, you did great. If the price goes down to zero, to Apple, then you lost 480 because you don't have the obligation, you only have the right, okay? Now, so this is the, the call, the call price. So the price of the call option notice decreases as the price increases. So if we look at the same date, June 16, 2017 and June 16, 2017. Notice this this option, if you want to buy it for 145, you only have to pay 250. And this makes sense because the price is higher. The, your cost is higher. Therefore, you're going to pay less of a premium. So notice as the strike price goes up, I it's, it's worth less for me. Therefore, I have to pay less of a premium. So if you want to, you can pay $250 to buy Apple stock for 145 on the same date. But simply put, 145, it means you are paying in total 165.50. I'm sorry, one, $2, uh, $2 147.50. So your price goes up. If your price goes up, you pay less premium because you, you, you are willing to pay more. Okay, so because you're paying more, you ha because you are paying more per stock, your premium will go down. Okay, hopefully you know. Hopefully you see, you can see this. Also, uh, what you need to know. Let's talk about the put price now. So we're talked about. We we talked about the call price. Now always there's a put. There's a put, and here's the put price for the same option. The put price is three dollars and ninety cent. What does that mean? It means if you pay today someone three hundred and ninety dollars, you have to pay three ninety. You pay the premium three ninety. Why three ninety? Because each contract is three dollars and ninety cents times one hundred. Because all options comes in one hundred, you have to pay three ninety. You have the right to sell Apple stock at one hundred and forty. Now, assuming you have one hundred shares of Apple, we're going to assume it's a covered put, which we'll talk about that later on. But simply put, you have one hundred shares, and you think now what you're thinking? You're thinking Apple's going to drop to one hundred. And guess what? Because you think it's going to drop to 100 in June, what you do, you pay today $390 and you will give an, another sucker, in your opinion, another sucker, uh, the uh, uh, another sucker, the obligation to, to buy it from you. Simply put, because you have the right, you know, they have to deliver. So simply put, you're thinking it's going to go down to 100. So you can sell it for 140. And you're thinking, well, that's that's excellent for me. The other person thinking Apple stock's gonna go up. The other person thinking Apple stock's gonna go up to 200, and therefore, you're gonna pay me 390 now, and you're never gonna come back to me, ask me to buy your shares for 140, because they'll be crazy. Why? Because the price is 200. So notice, if you buy a put option, you think the price is gonna go down. That's why you buy a put option. The person that sells you the put option, doesn't think so. The person thinks the price is going to go up. Therefore, they're never going to see you. You're going to pay them three ninety, and you're never going to come back. And they're hoping they'll never hear from you. Okay. But the put option, 
And notice, the put prices increase with the exercise price. So if you want to sell your stock, the same stock, the same 100 shares at 145, if you want to sell it for a higher price, you have to pay a higher premium because you are guaranteeing your stock rather than 140, you're guaranteeing your stock at 145, okay? So, but, but, but remember, you have to pay a premium, okay? You have to pay a premium. So simply put, let's go back to this example. You have to pay 390, so simply put, you can sell it at three, uh, 140 for this option here, but you have to pay up front $3.09 per share. So really, uh, your, let's see, your, uh, your, uh, your cost is $140.10. So this is how much you're really selling it for. You're not selling it, you're not selling it, I'm sorry, um, 140 minus 390, 140 minus 390. Simply put, you're selling it for one, 37.1 this is what you're doing 136 not 137 so basically you're selling it for 136 if you bought that put you're selling it net 136.10 because you had to pay three dollars and 90 cent per share then you sell it for 40 therefore you're selling it for 136.10 okay so this is your net sale your net sale okay but notice if you want a higher price if you want to sell your stock at 145, you have to pay six dollars and sixty-five cents. And hopefully this makes sense because if you want to sell it for more, you have to pay a higher premium. Now, also what I want you to notice is option prices also increase with the time until expiration. And hopefully this will make more sense to you. Let me let me let me show you what I mean. So today is April. Today is April. If we're looking at the May options, May options are a month from now. Month from now, you can buy Apple stock for 140, paying only three dollars and eighty cent. Notice that. If you want to buy Apple stock June 16th, which is two months from now at 140, you pay more. Why? Because the more time you are buying, and just think of common sense. The more time you have, if somebody is giving you more time, you have to pay premium for that time because many things could happen. Therefore, you have to pay premium. You have more option. More time is more option. More option. Think about it. If I give you a month to finish your paper versus two months, you prefer two months. But if you if if it's two months and I'm charging you for two months, I'm gonna charge you more because I'm giving I'm giving you more time. So as time goes by, as time increases, the value of the option increases. And as the time goes down, the opposite is true. If somebody giving you less time, or as time expires, the option is worth less. So every day the option loses value. And we'll see that later on when we'll talk about options. The option has a time value factor. The option goes down in value as time goes by. So let's see if we kind of try to look at this. What would what would be the profit or loss per share to an investor who bought the June expiration Apple call option with an exercise price of 140? So we're looking at this here. We're looking at this one here. If the stock price at the expiration was 150, okay, what would the purchaser of a put option with the same exercise price and expiration. So simply put, they're asking us what would happen to the expiration on the expiration date, okay? If, assuming the price is 150. Well, let's assume you were, you, you bought the option to buy it at 140, to buy it at 140. Remember, you bought it at 140, but you paid an extra $4.80. Okay, let's do this. Let's get a calculator here. So you bought it. So your price per share is 140 plus four dollars and eighty cent. You could multiply it by one hundred. So it's one forty four eighty. So your cost is one forty four eighty. If the option is one fifty, if, if the, at the expiration the Apple stock is one fifty, well you made a profit one fifty minus one forty four eighty minus 150 to find the, the, the profit the profit you made a profit of five dollars and 20 cent per share per share which is times 100 is 520 dollars that's your profit per share what happened if you bought the put option and you paid three dollars and 90 cent per stock times 100 so you paid 390 dollars what will be your loss or your gain guess what this is what you lost that's what your loss is if you bought the right to sell it for 140 and it's at 150 you're not going to sell it for 140 right because you can sell it for 150 so what happened is you purchased this option for 390 
and now you're just gonna let it go you would lose 390 so your loss the person that purchased the put loses 390 the person that bought the call made 520 hopefully this make sense now let's learn from options to future contract they're kind of a little bit in, uh, in concept the same but they're different really a future contract calls for a delivery of an asset you have to deliver an asset or in some cases it's cash value at specified delivery or maturity date for an agreed upon price called the future price to be paid at the contract maturity kind of the same thing you promise but here what happened is you promise and if you if you have that promise it's an obligation not the right you promise and you have to deliver here the future contracts deal with commodity coffee oil okay for example last month when the oil prices went down substantially and inventory went up there was no room there was no room for uh, uh, for people holding the contract so for example if you have if you had if you had a, if you had a contract uh, to buy the product to buy the oil okay you had the contract to buy the oil and what happened is they're gonna deliver you deliver the oil to you because you have that contract but there, were, there was not, not enough capacity to to store that oil so what people were doing they were paying people so rather than selling the contract, I will give you money if you take if you take the contract off my hands. It was a very unusual time because when they delivered that oil to you, you have no place to store it. Companies, traders were trying to give you money. Rather, it's like I'm selling you something and I'm gonna give you money just to take it off my hand, right? It has value, but I can't I can't have it because I don't have enough capacity. It was an unusual time because of the coronavirus, but that's what actually happened. So that's what that's what the future contract is the long position is held by the trader who commit to purchase so if you are holding that if you have a long position if you were if you're saying i'm going to, i want to buy the oil and you have that contract on the, you have to buy it on the delivery date you have to buy the oil and there was no room there was no inventory no capacity because people were not driving to store the oil this is the long position the, the trader who takes the short position commit to delivering now the person that that sells you who takes the short position they will deliver it to you they will give you the oil they don't want it they're selling it but you have to accept the oil okay so let's take a look at an actual example to see how the how the future market work and how different is it from the uh from the uh from the uh from the option market so we're looking here at the corn future prices on the chicago mercantile exchange april 18 2017. so we have the maturity may july september december march this is when the delivery will have to take place okay so here's what's going to happen each contract calls for five thousand bushels of corn so we're dealing with five thousand bushels of corn the long side of the contract profit from prices increases here's what's going to happen here's what happened today is april here's what they're telling you may 17th may 17th a month from now you can buy you can buy the five thousand bushel for three dollars and 61 cent pay a premium now forget about the premium now we don't have to worry about it but if you pay me a price now pay me two hundred dollars now and i will deliver five thousand of bushels of corn for three dollars and 61 cent now suppose at the expiration the price is 381 what do you think happened if i bought this option what do you think happened if i purchased this option well if i purchase this option i have a profit i have a profit if i purchase this option i have a profit the long trader who entered the contract at the future price of 361 on april 18 would pay the previously agreed upon price for each bushel of corn which is 361 that's worth 381.15. Now, why would I do that? Why would I pay that? Why would I, if I am the long position, why would I pay a premium to buy it at 361? Because my fear is the price will go up. And indeed, the price goes up. The price went up. As a result, I made a profit. Let's ignore all fees and everything. How much is my profit? Well, my profit is a thousand dollar. If I did not buy it, I'll have to pay 381. Now I only have to pay 361.25 times 5,000 bushel, I made a profit of $1,000 because I purchased this option. Now, obviously, again, there must be a cost, then you subtract your cost, and your cost may be like $200. So your net 
profit is 800, but we're ignoring the fees for now to illustrate the point. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more in advance about these topics later on. Okay. Now, on the up, on the other hand, the short the short position must deliver 5,000 bushels for 361. Now, the person that promised to deliver the bushels at 361 made a mistake because if they did not sell you that that future contract they could have sold it on may in may for 381 but hey oh look they made a commitment they have to deliver therefore their loss of obviously is a thousand dollar because they lost a thousand dollar they could have sold it for 381 but their loss is a little bit less than a thousand why because you have to pay them a premium so it's a thousand minus if you pay them 200 so their loss is 800 simply put kind of they, they mirror your your gain so it's very important to understand this. The purchase price of an option or future is a premium. So when we say, when we talk about a premium, it means you have to pay something. Here, there's no premium. I, I told you the premium is 200. So the long position, the person wants to buy the corn, the, uh, yeah, we're dealing with corn. The person that wants to buy the corn will have to pay 200 to the person who wants to deliver the corn, okay? And obviously, they have two different mindsets. The, pers the person that's buying the corn thinks the corn is going to go up to $4. The person that's selling the corn thinks it's going to go down to 3 okay? So the, the buyer, because it's gonna, he thinks it's going to go up to 4 he wants to lock it at 361 The seller, because he thinks it's going to go down to 3 he wants to lock it at 361 So they're both, in a sense, happy because they hedge the risk. That's, that's the purpose of the derivatives, which we'll talk about that later is to hedge your risk now remember a future contracts is an obligation oblig obliges the long position to purchase very important and big difference between the call option it conveys the right to purchase you don't have to buy if you buy a call option you don't have to buy you have the right if you want to buy it if it's in your best interest you do if it's not you let it go the future contract you have to buy and this is why the the people that bought the future oil contract they were trying to get rid of it because they have to get they have to receive the oil they have the oil has to be delivered to them so therefore they let it go okay so the purchase will make the purchase will be made only if the asset ultimately worth more than the exercise price simply put it's only if you make a profit as always i would like to remind you to like this recording share it don't forget to visit my website farhatlectures.com for additional resources for your finance as well as your accounting need if you're a finance major i strongly suggest you supplement with an accounting minor hedge your position right hedge your position in the next session we'll start to look at the securities market study hard stay safe and always always